trying to kill two bags with one stone. Two bags with one stone. That is right, and the help that's walk on John, Mama, and Daniel right here on stage. They're going to do something creative. You know, Nigerians, what they can do. All right, please kindly give it up to them. <laughs> and Nigerian will always be a Nigerian. From Abba. I have to request for this to happen. Um, when they say the time is too short, and we might just take one section. I said, no, 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 I want to have to conclude this section with him by the side, okay? Um, while you were away, we started something, and then we we're going to end it together. Um, because when you were taking your first session, you kept saying, have you had a, 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 who knows about business model canvas, who knows about product development? Fantastic, fantastic job you're doing around that space. You know, but what I've noticed is that around Africa, they give us a lot of appetizer. We don't really eat the main, the main, the main thing. Okay? So, you notice I asked for a whiteboard earlier. What I wanted to do with the whiteboard was that I wanted to draw the business model canvas for us. Please, you need to go to my slide now, okay? Um, one thing we need to do is, first of all, we need to understand that a building a business model is not cast in stone. It's not like building a model you use in um, molding plastics, okay? When you are molding a plastic, you build something like a model pre-cast. So that when you now pour in, it takes the shape of that. Now, that's actually what building a model is. But one beautiful thing about building a business model is that you build it and with time you can tweak it because the taste of your customer might change, then you need to change. I say we need, we looked at a problem solving framework, the questions we must ask ourselves when we're building a business. Another question we must ask ourselves is, what am I building? Is my business a labor of love, mass market, golden goods or high end? Where, which of these quadrants does my business belong to? It's very important for us to know if your business is few customers and low price. Tell yourself the business is a labor of love. It will take you a lot of time to grow and, be, and make it big. So you know where you are positioned. If your business is mass market, a lot of market, a lot of customers, but your price is like selling recharge card. I don't know how it is in Ghana. But in Nigeria, you see that it's very little margin they sell it with. Okay? Some of them used to sell mass market. Now, a, a friend of mine, I think Star 73 Star is here. Yeah, those short codes they do. Now, the guys that developed Star in Nigeria with GT Bank, initially when they offered it to GT, GT didn't want it. You know, they just, it was not when they told GT, it's not going to cost you anything. We're going to build this platform. We're going to license it to you. Okay, but we're not giving you exclusivity. Anything we make from it, take 50%, we take 50%. GT saw that they have nothing to lose, they offered it to them. As of December, as of December, we are reviewing, I sit on the board of one of the organizations. As of December, they were making 300 million naira every day. Let me give you an example so that you can convert. 300 million naira is like, uh, one CD is 98 naira. Okay, let's say one CD is 100 naira. Let's, to, for, to make it easy. That's like, is it 30 million? That's 30 million CDs every day. On a daily basis, Sunday or Monday, Tuesday. Now, right now, churches in Nigeria now use that same code. Like if I want to pay my tithes, I do star, 73 star, so 157 star amount starts 58 cash and then tight goes if it's offering star 73 star 157 and there's a code for tight there's a code for so it has come into payment and you know what their platform is not so technical like most of the sites were built USSD is just one page system now they understand their market and when you see that your market is mass market that you need to know how to enter. 
your entry system is different from the person that is golden goose. Like selling um, investments. Who is giving money? It's very few people. You can see um, the numbers he was showing us. It's also that his number of clients might be 100. It might be 100 people they are managing their funds and they are having that level of million. Now, they are at the high end point, few customers, but it's high. Okay? So if you know the market where you are, it still tells you how to position. Let's go to the next slide. I want to run till here. Now, you need to tell, like we say, is your business a painkiller or a vitamin? We talked about it earlier. It must be solving a problem that people desperately need. Have you seen someone that suffers from asthmatic pains before? An asthmatic patient. If an asthmatic patient is having an attack, if you don't see Ventolin to just gulp in or swallow, the person can drop dead. Now, that's how your product should be positioned. Something people read, not something people can just... Uh, you know, you usually forget taking your yellow medicine, right? All those uh, multivitamins, they give you... But, but just have a, a fracture and you need to, you are limping, you will take painkiller like, you know, as if it's water. You, the doctor ask you to take one, you ask it, can I take two, okay? So you need to position your business in such a way that it's solving real measurable pro problem. Now, let's run, let's run. I want to get to a particular point, okay? Let's keep running, let's, let's do it, okay? Now, when you are building a business model canvas, um, there's something we've been doing lately. We've been comparing business model, the conventional business model canvas with the lean model canvas. Uh, because when you are starting, it's very important you describe your the, your solution properly. It's also very important you describe the problem you are solving. The business model canvas doesn't describe the problem you are solving as much as the lean model canvas. So what I try to tell people, there should be a marriage between the two. Now, this is very clear. The first and most important thing you need to do is, what is your value proposition? He talked about it. What value are you offering? If you don't know the value you are offering to your customers, please don't start. The Lean Modern Canvas tells you, asks you, what problem are you solving? That's the first important question you must answer. What problem are you solving? Because if you have a clear cut problem you are solving, and then you have a proper definition for your solution, you can build the pitch, like what he was trying to, he said, told you to say in the morning, you need to say, um, I'm so, for example, there is a platform we're building in Nigeria. Um, I can talk about it. Yes, it's called a launch card. Okay? We want to solve a payment problem for food. We have a lot of our students in Nigeria. So, you know, Nigeria students, we, study, we live everywhere. We study everywhere. There are some universities in this country that might have more Nigerian students than Nigerian students. Do you know? Okay. Now, it's challenging for us to pay for food for our, our siblings that are in those schools. Um, just recently, okay, and then our student, the number of Nigerian students, even in Nigeria, you know, our population is so high uh, that they give universities quota. Now you can't employ more than three hundred. You just be begging now. Please let's employ more than. Let's take. Uh, we are we are lots, okay. We are, they say we are one twenty, one eighty million, but I know we are two hundred and thirty or so. Okay. <laughs> now, the problem of food. It's everyone's problem. So we decide we we built a platform, okay, which will go live by July 20th, where student use a card and goes to pay for his meal. Any restaurant you enter to buy um, food and other quality beverages. So your your what is in school? So I'm giving him cash for food. You can give him cash for that things, but you are guaranteeing that he's eating. You give him lunch card or you pay money into his lunch card. He takes his lunch card and go to any restaurant or any place. If he finishes eating, uses uh, he stops his life, like either swaps it, or, you know, or, and, and, um, there's a barcode reader that then collects units from the money. Nigerian students use it across the world. Now we already we have established contact with like um, 27 countries where there are Nigerian students and Nigerian student communities. They are going live at the same time. Now, that is solving a major problem. Before we built it, we are able to define our solution properly such that we know what problem we are solving. We don't want anyone that shouldn't go hungry to go hungry. For example, my money finishes in the afternoon and my father is thinking of how to send me money and my money finishes on Saturday. That means I will go hungry Saturday evening, Sunday, morning, 
and they now do transfer. It's, it might be the type of transfer if it's um, telex to UK or to whichever where it will take a longer time. So immediately he drive, drives a code or from his platform, pays it straight into my launch card. At least food is guaranteed. You eat so that you can, you know, still focus and study. You know, you describe the problem you are solving, and then you say, what is your segment of the customer segment? Who are your customers? Now, there's a difference between your user and your customer. If you are providing a service for children, your users might be children, your customers are the parents. If you are studying just your customers, you're making an error. You need to study your user and study your customer. How do children buy? That's why if you go to malls, you see that toys, children things, biscuits are at the lowest parts of the graph. They don't put it on top. It's because they've studied children that if a child is passing and see a toy she likes, the child will do what? Grab it. And you must fail. <laughs> you understand? By the time you get to pay, you are paying. And your daughter will just read, Daddy, this one. Do you understand? He, she has collected it, she has dragged it along. She has collected one biscuit shelf. All those eye catching things, they are the lowest bed. It's because they've studied the customer and have also studied the user. Now you need to understand your user. How does your user use money? How do I prefer to spend? Who am I? Where do I live? Why are you studying your customer? So that you know where your customers are. If your customers are working class adults, they are not on Facebook in the afternoon. Because most companies lock their Facebook. You can't access Facebook in the afternoon work, during work hours. So if you are doing Facebook marketing, you should know when to put in your time. By 5.30, that guy locks on, on Facebook from his mobile. You see the trend. He can be on Facebook till around 12 a.m. He goes to sleep. The first, when he wakes up in the morning, the first thing he checks is his social media. And by 8 a.m., when he's in the office, he drops. So it tells you how to position your advert. If, we, if your customer is a type of person that works in a place when you enter, you submit your phones. People that work in industries, when you enter, you submit your phone. You know when to target the advert. You know when to target, the, you know, you know how to reach him. You, why you studying your market is to know how much your customer can spend. Your average propensity to spend. And what the things they can spend more on. Okay? Um, there's a, an e-commerce platform in Nigeria called Ajibo. Ajibo was an e-commerce platform for girls, where they sell girl things, okay? But we found out that more guys were patronizing at <laughs> You know what we started doing? We started reducing the number of female things on at and started putting male watches, male um, um, wallets, pocket square, some of those accessories that men need that they don't usually go set out to go and buy. We found out that in three months, the numbers changed. We said, go to Ajiba and buy stuff. Do you understand? Know perfumes, selected ones. People now, where Ajiba became like almost a social media platform for guys to recommend what guys need. Right now, Ajiba stock no one, no one female thing. Now, why I'm saying is that your customer segmentation must keep going, changing. This thing must be fluid. Every startup must have this printed in your office, just with the parts that have yellow will be stick, okay, will be consistent. And then you use post-it notes and write who are your customers. Like in a brainstorming section with your people, who are our customers? Anybody, anybody suggesting your team, paste it there, paste it there, define it. These customers, what do they offer? What's the percentage? Because if you know that one customer, one segment of customer buy 80% of my um, product, and the other one buys 20%. Who should I focus more on? The guy that buys 80%. Then, who, what my, who are, what my key resources? Who do I need? Key resources in terms of the material need and the human capital need. You need to define it. You know, if you are building a tech company, you need programmers. You need data analysts. You need certain things. You need graphics person. You need a branding company. You need to write down the things you need. You need to know what your key activities are. What you must do daily. For example, this is pasted boldly in my office. So people, everyone working in the office knows what to do daily. Okay, most of the companies we service, you know what to do for each and every one of them. And what we have also done is that we remitted business model canvas for all our clients. So that uh, in-house we know what is our client's strength. 
Okay? We know what our client strength is. And then your revenue stream. You need to know whether this business will make money. If it will not make money, there is no need going into it in the first place. I know Brock Kenneth said something about you are not an entrepreneur, entrepreneur is not about making money. It, but if you don't make money, you'll be discouraged. <laughs> you'll be discouraged. Money is not your key focus, but money is important, okay? Because you need to grow. By the time you get to the point of growth and income is not consistent, you don't have income, you must have it. I might, I'm building something I know that in the first two years I'm not making profit. But I've built it, I'm building it, okay? My first business, I didn't make profits the first three years, okay? But after nine years, I landed a project. I, let, I didn't make profit on waste management for the first three years. But after nine years, I landed a project of 50 million US dollars to control a project of 50 million US dollars on waste management. And for me, it's key. It's key. I became a strength, I became a strong point, you know, a strong reference point when it comes to waste management. And I'm designing for other people. And now sit, if I come, if you're building a waste management company and I come to sit in your meeting, I know the amount of money that will pay, be paid. I have to integrate GIS into West Virginia, that's the Revenue Information System. Because I knew the key, I, I knew the things that were important, I focused on them over a period of time. You know, the next thing that is very important is you need to know how do you relate to your customer. Is it by SMS? Is it by email? If you order for anything, there's a, a business I am part of, a startup I'm part of, it's called GigaLayer. If you order for anything on GigaLayer right now, you get a thank you email. Personalized thank you email. If you order the next one, the next email you get will not sound the same way. What have we done? We have built in a lot of things, thank you emails, so that I can shuffle from time to time. Okay? So you need to understand how is your customer thinking. Your customer, if your customer is this someone in your... What's the name of our local market here? <laughs> huh? Makola. Makola. If your customers are there, you don't go and spend a lot of money and do... Facebook advert and do um, advertise on LinkedIn and spend money on YouTube advert. Who is watching that? Well, they are not. You need to go to their market. You need to go to where they are found. You need to design things that they need. We talked something about product development. We said it's not about can this be built. It's about should this be built. If it should not be built, don't start it at the first place. It's very important we understand the, pe the things our people need. Let's go to the next slide, okay? Find out what people need. Go to the next slide. Let me know. Um, label on this value here. Yeah. Find out. Go, go. Keep going until I say you should stop. Okay. Yeah. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Stop here. No, go back. To the first. Find out what people need, okay? A business model, say it's a mechanism through which a startup source is target customers' problem better than potential or existing alternatives? Now, if you use lean model canvas, you you will see what are the, what's your solution you are providing and who what is what are the alternatives? What are they using instead of to solve this problem? For example, um, if you are doing a fintech business right now, the alternative to your fintech is the bank. The banks are doing most of the things you want to use your fintech to do. Okay? Now, why are you studying your alternatives? So that you know how to reposition your product properly to offer a better value than your alternative. Now, and you find out your widest margin. What's your margin? For example, let's say you're offering me a fintech solution that will make me pay three times what it will cost me to go to bank. Ah, uh, Kino Dena. I walk into my bank. Some say, hey, they queue in the bank. My bank. There's no queue in my bank, standard charter. I don't know whether it's like that in this place. Standard charter bank, you walk in, you walk out. So, if your solution does not provide service at a cheaper rate, you need to tweak it. So, build your model having that in mind. I want to know how to do offer something variable and know who is willing to pay and the cost, what it will cost me to build it. Cost is very important. Sometimes we assume our cost, we don't know all entirety of our costs. And there's something um, Uncle Bora said here. He said, business is tough in Ghana, not just in Ghana. Business is tough everywhere in the world. Let your overhead be low. If you 
it's not compulsory you need to hire an office space and design your office and repaint it and do all that. If you can find a good workspace, if you can find someone that you share office space, make sure the person has a big generator. The problem I solved for myself when we started, when we moved to relocate from over to Lagos, was that I got an office that was fully serviced, paid for by someone else, giving me a desk space in with in exchange of my training services. I train certain courses for them in their office, in their days, it's a training company. I was taking certain courses for them and they gave me a desk space, okay, to take four of my staff. And it was just me. You know what I did? I got three other people that provided certain services for me. I got those services free of charge by giving those people the space that, and they answered my staff. I wanted zero percent. I wanted everything to be at low cost, okay? And then certain times, I, I agreed to take this offer free of charge for the person. But certain times, if still, after I finish training for him, he will still pay me. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Okay? Um, Uncle Mesa said, some, Pastor Mesa said something about service. One great thing about service is that as you are serving, you are improving on yourself. I read a book called Outlier. It said, if you want to become an expert in anything, you do that for 10,000 man hour. 10,000 man hour. Sometimes do it free of charge. I want to be an expert. Okay? I want to be an expert in what I'm doing. I talk about business strategy and product development. You know, I sit on the board of some companies just for strategy. I, you know, you know, I take pen and paper. And when I have marker and whiteboard, my brain opens naturally. My brain opens, and I've seen that. And I notice that in startup ecosystem in Nigeria, people are noticing that. You know, there is no day that day does not come that I don't get an offer to either set up an incubation business for someone. Now, I was talking to um, Ken. I don't know how much, how far you will take it, but I'm talking to you now. I'm also talking to you people. You people need to build a serious local incubation system here. It's not, it's never too much. Find a place startups can go and see a safe heaven where they can work, relax their mind, work, and then someone can look at their business plan and say, guys, this thing you're doing is rubbish. Start afresh. Okay, someone can sit on their board. You know, most of the startups need board, but they can't afford those big guys. But they can afford us to do certain things free of charge for them. You look at their numbers, say, young man, you are not doing this, you are not doing this, you are not doing this. Until we are able to establish that, that's what they had in Silicon Valley we don't have. Until we are able to build that, build an ecosystem, synergize, get certain things for exchange. Okay, you are good in accounting, I'm good in strategy. And you know, um, he's good in, um, you know, he's good in, um, um, what's his name, um, Brenda, what's his name, Bernard, he's good with brands. Four of us come together and set up a consortium for Christ's sake, use our system together, and bid for these things. Get, attract value together, because some people trust Bernard, some people trust me, some people trust you. The number of people that have trusted us together, we use, we, if a startup used four of us as his board, they will listen to him better. Okay, let's run, let's run, let's run. I want to hand over for him to talk about business plan. I've talked about mostly about um, business model. Okay, your revenue stream is very important. Design a revenue model. How does my money come? The how is very important. Okay, how your money comes and how everything ties together to your revenue. If you can't see how money is going to be made in your business, please roll, keep rolling, okay? It's very important you know how it comes. Your business can be e-commerce, just keep rolling. It could be ad-based, it could be a marketplace, it could be subscription-based, it could be transactional. Know what works for you. Know what works for you. And then, please and please again, you don't need to perfect the business before you start. There's something called MVP, Minimum Viable Products. Keep moving. Your minimum viable product is very important. You keep moving, don't stop. It's very important you build your minimum viable product so that if and, um, there's a picture I will get to and you'll stop. Just keep going. Okay. Your minimum viable product is something you can build where people can use and measure what you're doing. Before you build and go to market, please, before you spend money to even buy a domain, go and build a landing page, simple landing page. 
my um, um, startup five. Yeah? Startup five is an organization to do, 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 do. the benefits of startup five. Do, 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 do. And then, if you want to be informed about startup five, when we start, please. And then, the person please and submit email, and then you follow up by sending the person a questionnaire, ask certain things about your product. So the information you get from them is what you use and build. Don't build what you think. You are not the customer. You need to build what the people need. Keep moving. You need to build what the people need. If it gets to a point where they can discover a better way of building this, okay? How you can build something minimal. Like if you are building an MVP, it's not keep moving. There's a last page you'll get to, and then you just stop at that place. And you, if you are building an MVP, it's not building a car that has one tire and then two tires. No, it's building a skating machine first. From skating to bicycle, from bicycle to motorcycle, then to a car. If you are, if you, yeah, exactly. That's where I want you to stop. This is not an MVP. You start with tire. Ah, I've not started selling. I don't do. No, you build it from here, you learn from it, you improve on it, you learn from it, you improve on it. You don't build. Remember when Facebook started? It started as the Facebook. It was just from university, it started growing. So, can you start with your church members, the people in your immediate environment? They will give you feedback. Tell them, please, if you have feedback, don't tweet it. Send me an email. You learn from them, you grow, you grow. Because if you are waiting for when you go full blast, you will wait forever. Okay? Um, John, please. Um, I need you to talk more about business plan and then we can take questions together. Thank you. Wow. And you're amazing. And it's good to meet a brother like you. You know Kola Ene? Kola Ene. You know Ventures Platform? Yeah, yes. Kola is a good friend. So there's an incubator in, in uh, Lagos that is put out of containers. Stop, stop. And actually the founder is a friend. Some guy has big money, big money. Doesn't yeah. make a lot of noise. Uh, so the model you have for the church, yeah. we have something similar like that, which we work with. Um, it's called Asori Bank. Asori Bank, no, um, Savior. Yeah, actually yeah. Nana. Nana Savior. Yeah. So, Met them at Mest Conference. Wonderful. So we actually work together with them as well. And then in terms of the incubators, we're not actually here. Yeah, we have Impact Hub. We have iSpace. We have um, Kumasi Hub, Kumasi Hive. We have Hapa Space. We have the Tamale Hub. We have M Friday. So, so we, and luckily my firm has supported them to get to this one. So we have a built ecosystem. Just lack of information that kept us. Can I take my mic? Since spoken about um, the wireless. Okay. <clears throat> so, where is it? Okay. Yeah. So, we are going to talk. So, I mean, go back to the best model for us. Let me start from there. Okay, the business model comes up. Back, 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 back. <coughs> so, before that, I can tell you for a fact that none of the billionaires we've seen in the world today actually did the business model canvas. Or the things that we are teaching you today. They started and then after some time, the thing is. For most of us in business, we think that it is luck that makes it successful. We all want business to drop off. But the goal is really to make it successful. Sometimes, it's not easy to tell you. It is really your consistency. Being consistent at what you do brings out the perfection you need on the journey towards success. Right? Good. So that's one of the things that I want you to go out with. Now, with the business model cover that he explained to you, mind you, there's a way to go about this. It's not just picking and choosing. It's really that, like you were saying, so what I was talking to, I told you about problem identification. Once you define the problem, you've got to look at who those customers are, what they are spending on, uh, what are the alternatives that exist, etc. Then from here, you've got to add, now ask yourself what value you bring to them. What most people forget is that these are interlinked, so you map them. So if you list one consumer here or a user here, the value that you're listing here should relate to point one, point two. That's the way it works. Now, after you deliver the value, 
More often than not, there are two approaches. You move to find out which people do you need to deliver this value. For example, you say you want to do packaging or you want to do uh, uh, um, soap. You need to buy the bottles from someone. So who am I buying the bottles from? Key partners. Key partners. Now, what we are saying here is that as you move along in the business, things will happen. You need to find out how you reach these people. So you deliver. Right? So you use vans, you in fact you didn't use social media to advertise and stuff like that. Those are the channels you use to reach people. Then now you go to ask yourself that what key activities every day best describe my business model? Which he described it. So the business model now becomes maybe you are a manufacturing company. Then you package as well. You add other services. So it is these services that you now go to register your now to go and register your business. Are we making sense so far? Good. So let's break it down. We're breaking it down. Then now, with these activities, what kind of resources that you will need? And you're spoken at length yeah. on that one. Yeah. Then, for all these resources, like you're saying, there's a cost. Now, you see that with the revenue streams, when we ask people, how do you make money? People don't actually have a, an answer to that. But you should be able to tell someone how you make money in one sentence. For example, we charge a 15% markup on our services. Very simple. So therefore, if we have 30 clients charging an average X on these people, we expect to make this amount. Now, you come and say that, okay, so our cost structure is X. If you less it from it, this is how much you make. However, we think that if you consider periods, we won't make money in this financial year. It's as simple as that. So therefore, we go ahead and ask you what your PNL is, your, your balance sheet is, and all of those cash flow things that we we'll ask you to present along with your business plan. So when you have done this, you are now moving to what the business plan is. Now, in short, more often than not, we start, people start with executive summary in a business plan. No. It's actually the last thing you write. Because then you are summing up. So I like to describe the executive summary in a business plan as a pitch. What you are saying here is that, look, let me give you an example of a pitch. You start with the problem. Right? When you're describing the problem, I've already told you how you define the value proposition, right? So you really define the problem. Now I come to what the solution is. The solution, more often than not, is when people ask you about this idea, you are telling us about features of the product. So it was a good thing when you were describing your business and you said that the scent and stuff is what it does, right? Good. But is that the ultimate satisfaction for the consumer? Is it the scent? Okay, so for instance, uh, I have one product line which is the hand soap. Okay. Uh, what customers would want to see is uh, how foamy it is, okay. the thickness, okay. the fragrance. Okay. So these are the three. You are still telling me the features of the product. Yeah, features. What so people that, always want to know is the benefits. benefits. He has to remove oh, items, oh, remove yeah. things. Oh, okay. So in simple words, we call them hacks. You should be able to describe what that solution is. So for some people, oh, I think my laptop is on the back. I'll show you a sample page we did for some clients. But you can go to slidebean.com. S-L-I-D-E-B-E-A-N.com. For a sample of how a page should be. Okay. Right. Go to a um, few slides after this. There is a, um, there yeah, there's a sample. Yeah. Page. Let's, let's look at that. Uh, yeah, okay, no, go back, go back, yes. My company name is this, developing this. You see, this is your elevator pitch. Yeah. This is when I meet you and you are even introduced to this. Like, but mind you, mind you, and yesterday I was doing a training with all our staff, yesterday, and we learned something important. Whenever you are describing your business idea, don't, and this is good, start with the why you do what you do. So when you ask a Chelsea student, just a, I went there from my boss, Chelsea is coming out with the train. It's a design thinking coach. When you ask somebody from a Chelsea, well, what's a Chelsea? Oh, so a is a school that is built to refocus um, African leadership on ethics and blah, blah, blah. Before they now think there's university. So <laughs> they actually tell you why they are in that school. So you want to tell people why you actually told them what you do before you tell them what you do. So when you move from here, move to the elevator pitch. That before, sure. Don't before. Before. How many of NGOs? Show by hand. Okay, I'll address those two. So, good. Now, while this is what you're telling someone when you meet the person 
just at this event, etc. We are focused on what John fishing. So typically, when you define your idea, you have a business model canvas, you don't have resources yet. Sometimes someone will charge you a lot. So build the, the pitch is like our problem, then you look at the solution that you are building. I wish I was right. After you build a solution, you are describing the benefits on the features. Now you come to how different you are. Your unique selling proposition. What makes you different? Then now you ask yourself what your competitive advantage is on the market. Right? Now from there you move into looking at who is helping you build what you are building. Right? Good. Now, more people around in Africa, you like running James Bond sort of businesses. It's you, you alone. You know, it's very happy to register a business like Enterprise. It's this. Enterprise is actually a business name. You've only got to register a business name. Yeah, it works. It's a structure to grow. Because as you know, I want you to take equity in your business. Then I need to go and change shareholding. Then I need to go and change shares. Then who do you need to enter the business with? I'll send you earlier. Oh, it was my father. My father has passed away. So, <laughs> we need to do things right. Are you going so far? Then what is important to investors like the side I saw when I entered is how big the market is. What's the market size? Right? What's your market size? Then people also want to know your adoption strategy. How do you convert new clients into the business? And then we importantly want to also want to know your revenue model. If we had done the, the session, we would have taken this and we would have developed it ourselves. So this was now you went use you, this what you are armed with to share with an uncle, a father, a friend, and you see that the funding care starts now. So you are starting with your friends telling them, oh, this is my idea. Sometimes you don't have the money to build the actual product. So you need to show, you need to show um, a prototype. So design it and stuff like that. Design it and let's go now buy it. Then after that, you work on your business. So what is the business? I said, the executive summary is the last thing to write, wait for the pitch, and then you show your revenue on what you're asking for. These days, investors are looking for, looking to do convertible. Convertible debt. How many know convertible debt is show by hand? Because startups are very risky, they now do start with debt, they meet you as low. Then after a period, they convert it to equity. It's safer for all of us these days. So they now ask for, when you have submitted a business plan stuff, ask for a term sheet. They will submit a term sheet to you. And that will be their term. More often than not, when they are doing the convertible, there's something we call the coupon rate. Coupon rate is, you, you need to know also, at what rate when I take this facility, I be able to pay back for what people. Are, are, we, are we on the same page? Good. So these are some things that you need to do. So after you are done with your executive summary, after you are done with your executive summary, more of the company introduction. Introduce the company. What, what are you about? What is your current position? Are you an early stage company? Are you a good stage company? Are you a mature company? Let me tell you, the world over. If you've raised something below 500,000, 1 million thousand, you're actually just at seed stage. So that's what I was telling you, startup, when you say you're a startup, it's a mindset issue. Because if you have not raised more than a million dollars, I'm sorry, you are still at seed, you are at baby stage. I think you never, you know. Then from there, we are raising up to, and then there are shares that you can, people can take. So if it's below 1 million, first thing I take about 15%, it's about 25% of your business. They can't take more than 50%. If you sell more than 50% of your business, you are doing it because you respect the fact that we keep saying that having a small size of the pie is better than having a bigger size of, of that thing. Then, after the current time, yeah. Hey, it's yours. Okay. Then, after the current, current position, you're moving on to uh, describing what the market is about, right? You, you're telling us that. Then, you're moving also to the teams that you're working with, you're moving to your strategy and your tactics. You're moving to two minutes. You ready? Okay. Well, let me deal with it. Yes, yes. Um, so, right yeah. so, our next yeah. speaking will be taking all the slide right from the morning from yeah. Joe Jackson. So, I mean. Let me end with something important okay. for you. Get Go to the next slide. In the space, the NGO space. Google Lock Free. Yeah. Please yeah. show us Lock Free. Okay. okay, you know what I can do? I can share a template of business, a business plan template um, with Ken so that he can because business plan is something very very key. You can download it online. Yeah. Yeah, you can download it online. Yeah. You can download, uh, I want to show you what just go online, log free, and then let's let's end.
this one. You see, Nigerians are there. When you give Nigeria five minutes, it's fixed for 20 minutes. The Nigerians do both things. But Ghanaians do two at two. Nigerians is looking for just, Ghanaians are looking for five minutes, they say it's time. Hope you love prayer for me, let me finish. You know, when we started in the morning, you were not around, we established that there's no difference between Nigerian and Ghanaian. It's just, it's just, um, it's just, it's just, Forget that, Jalop. Ah. <laughs> you know what happened? Nigeria and Nigeria and Ghana have been removed from that campaign entirely. Senegal. Senegal. That's what my minister of uh, information they asked him. Yeah, he said he, he said it's Senegal. Forget that, Jalop campaign. Okay, I think we can be asking questions why they are doing this. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Any question? If you have a question. Yeah. Okay, come and sit down. You know when you sit down. You will not know that time is moving. <laughs> Question. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause to our uh, next gentleman. Yeah, I guess I'll take one or two. Question one for you, one for him. Paulina, say something. You are smiling. Say something. Any question? Um, well, actually, you said um, Just to look for when, the images. when you are developing a business plan, you actually end with a summary, yeah. right? Um, but then it's actually presented at the beginning. It comes first, but it's written but last. It's written last. Yes. I think I want you to emphasize that so that it doesn't go to... Um, the cover page, yes. yes That's the first thing you see on your business plan, but it's written last because it's content of what you have written that you're using, writing the executive summary, basically. Okay, question. No, just click on the first. On the go back. Go back. back. Okay. And then click on this one. Just click on, on this one. Okay. I'll show you something. You see, for most most businesses, even though the business plan is important, we don't really focus on it. We don't have time to be a business plan. If you are in cooperation, what to see what we call management accounts. We also want to see what we call a cap table. The cap table shows your shareholding structure, right? And then we want to see the financials. Now, if you're an NGO business, let's take in the microwave. If you're an NGO business, more often than not, we want to see tangibles, even for, for an enterprise or a little added company. We want to see your log frame, which is really the goal is the macro goal, what you want to achieve on a global scale. Are you helping to reduce unemployment? Are you helping to reduce waste in the environment? So what you want to do has got to tie into a national statistic. That's what you are saying. Then from there, you come to the outcome. The outcome is your specific objective. What it is that you want to do. Now I'll show you something. From there, you come on to the output. The output are your key, like I'm saying, your key deliverables. What you, how you are going to do it, and then you will take the activities thereof in that. What most donors are looking out for is your indicators. Indicators are what we're saying. If you've already been in business, then you have a baseline. A baseline is that last year you did X in sales. This year you are going to do this. In but how do we measure? those indicators. So therefore, you now begin to put questions like number of clients which, number of products sold, as metrics to assess whether you are growing as a business. Now, when you establish all these indicators, you now put to ask yourself that how do people verify that this data actually makes sense? So that's the means of verification, MOVIS. So which is that, is it your financial statement that will show that you're actually doing well? Do you have payment vouchers? This event, how will we know that you actually posted 50 people? Did they sign something? These are the means of verifying. Then we are saying that there's assumptions to it. You are starting a business you don't know anything about. So you must make some assumptions that, oh, we saw something causal analysis. If I do A, then B will be the outcome. Whenever you are planning in business, so this is what I want you to know. As you start your business, you are in business, you need to focus on good strategies. These are some of the tools that help you grow from that point A to point B and be sure that you are really serving the market. Now, always you must define your workflow within the business. You must define your corporate philosophy. It's very, very key. How you position your business is also a branding issue, which I'm sure my friend Bernard told you. Deciding on your logo, all of those things are important. And your financial reporting structure is very, very important. So, so these are some of the things I wanted to highlight. Thank you. I promise, right, thank you so much, gentlemen. I promise, Ken, I was going to. Oh God! I promise, Ken, I was going to do something um, 
for people that have businesses and their businesses are located in certain places and you need to put your business on Google My Business so that when your business is searched you know apart from your website and your social media you know that Google um, so what usually when people want to do that they will actually you put your details they will send you a code okay and because of our tel um, postal system most most of those code don't come but what Google is doing now um, they are trusted verifiers like I'm a trusted verifier for Google okay if you have your a location if you don't have a location for your business if your business is purely online you don't need to do that you go to business.google.com and register your basic business um, information if you're able to do that here right here right now I will be able to verify your business before you go okay Please, let's understand that after you have built all these things we are saying, you need to sell your business. You need to position your business for growth. You need to put it on the social media. You need to let people know about your business. You need to increase the searchability of your business so that people can find your business and find the things you are doing. It's very important that you are known. Go and find listing platforms. I don't know the names of listing platforms in Ghana. Go and list your business. List your business. List what you are doing. Let people know what you are doing. And, and watch yourself grow. Have a target of growing, doubling your business every month. If you can target that and do in a period of seven months, you'll be on your way to the top. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Please, a round of applause to them for me. Wow. Glad to meet Niger. Thank you so much.